Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new Honda Civic. Now available with Turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. It is Josh Donaldson Bobblehead Day here at Roger Center. It's a packed house, sold out crowd yesterday on Saturday. Josh Reddick back in the lineup today for Bob Melvin's Oakland Athletics, and the ball clubs are playing for this series win. They split the first two games. Oakland won on Friday night. The Jays won yesterday afternoon. Billy Barron is top of the order. He's done a good job lately. He's swinging about well. Seven game hit streak nine for 30 and he can run. He's going to be a concern if he gets on base today. Stephen Vogt had a three hit game on Friday. He has always hit well against the Blue Jays. 323 for his career with six extra base hits and five RBI. It's going to be a challenge for Drew Hutchison, but Hutchinson sure excited about making his first start of the season. Comes up from Buffalo to make that start just to push everybody back and give him one extra day of rest. There's Hutch's starts in AAA this year. 0 1 with a 4 11 earned run average. He pitched against the A's just once last season. He beat them 4 to 2, holding the A's just four hits, two runs over seven innings. Drew Hutchison a little bit more aggressive with his fastball down in spring training and his breaking ball. This is a good start for him here. I think the new front office for the Blue Jays get their foot first look at him in a major league uniform. Billy Burns a switch hitter batting left against Drew Hutchison. Here's the first pitch of the game and he cuts on it. He is a free swinger. Burns is two for eight in the series. I mentioned he's got a seven game hit streak. Burns is now 26 years old. Trying to come inside and he misses up out over the plate. Ball on the strike. You know, see Josh totally behind the plate for Drew Hutchison. Russell Martin was initially in the lineup, but right toward the end of pregame, they decided to scratch Martin and put Tolley back behind the plate. Upstairs. Hutchison had six walks and 20 strikeouts in his minor league starts. He made three starts for the Buffalo Bisons. His last start came on the 18th of April. His first two were really good, and his last one, not so much. I had a chance to talk to him in spring training, and I said, Is there anything different about what you were doing this year? And he says, Last year I got caught up in trying to be a little bit too fine, and I got out of my mechanics. and started getting around the baseball my hand would get on the side of the baseball and everything I couldn't control my fastball this year I'm just going to try and stay on top and just drive that ball down to two, two pitch good spot good sink on that ball it moved and that was something that Hutchison is really trying to accomplish a little more movement on that ball a lot of straight fastballs last year if he can make that ball go the other way up from his slider go to his arm side Mark Canna on deck there's a pop it's going to reach the seats out of play you mentioned Hutchinson trying to simplify things this spring and I think there is a tendency for pitchers to worry too much about scouting reports and mechanics I think when you get back out on the mound kind of like Jay Happ. It's yeah. his turnaround. Just Jay, simplify things. Jay's was about scouting reports and overthinking. Drew's was a little bit too much about mechanics. This is playable. Donaldson, the reigning MVP, makes the catch one down. Defensively, the Blue Jays, they had five red stars in the book yesterday. They were flashing the leather all over the place. Carrera back in left, Pilar in center, Jose Bautista is in right. Josh Donaldson and Troy Tulowitzki both made good plays yesterday. Darwin Bonney starts in place of Ryan Goins at second, smokes at first, and totally behind the plate for Drew Hutchinson. And you're right. The one guy who made an outstanding play. It was the first one of the game, was in the first inning. So on Josh Donaldson, bobblehead day. Let's talk about his defense. Outstanding as always. And how about the play to end the game yesterday? Barehanding that slow hit ball and firing over to first base a fitting capper to a very good defensive day for the Blue Jays and he just barehanded it and threw the first to end that ball game. This is Mark Canna he homered in his first at bat yesterday an opposite field home run off of Jay Happ. There's a slider that misses down and away.
Dan is 27 years old. Underneath that ball a bit and pushed it up out over the plate off the plate outside still 93 miles an hour when you get underneath the ball like that. Ball tends to rise and flatten out just a little bit. And that's what he was talking about in spring training about just concentrating on staying on top of the ball keeping your hand on top of the ball and you can control it. You don't hang pitches like that and, and you drive it to the lower parts of the strike zone. Looked like it was working in triple A at 20 strikeouts in those. Three starts that he had for Buffalo. Two balls and two strikes the number two hitter Mark Hanna. Went after that high fastball two up two down for Hutchison. Able to reach back for a little something extra and that time I think it was on purpose that he elevated the fastball reaches back. It's got a little cutting action to it but the elevation can and cannot. Catch up to it. Good start for Drew Hutchison. And Josh Reddick did not play yesterday he had two hits in the game on Friday night. Takes a first pitch strike. Reddick for the season batting 233. He's got three homers and 10 driven in. Tried to backdoor that breaking ball and missed. Big crowd on hand again today. We saw out a crowd. Josh Donaldson bobblehead day. Line drive, base hit. Reddick with a two out single. Good piece of hitting right there for Reddick against Drew Hutchison. Let's take a look at the scatter report for the young right hander, still just 25 years old. Fastball, he's going to throw it 65% of the time. He's going to try and cut it and sink it now, trying to get it off that hitting plane just a little bit more. He's got a good slider and a changeup. Last year they hit uh, 291 against the slider, so that just tells me that he was just not able to throw it where he needs to. So a couple of changes this season mechanically, hopefully helps him with that slider to keep it down. Catcher Steven Vogt batting 309 so far this season. He goes after the first pitch. This is something we saw Friday night against Sanchez, Oakland, very aggressive early in the at bats. They were hitting fastballs from Aaron Sanchez and some of the pitches were up and they, they were hitting but they as soon as they left the on deck circle they were ready to swing the bat. We saw it yesterday against Jay Happ using that fastball so he started cutting it and using his change up just a little bit more. And it doesn't have a stolen base attempt this season. Bob Melvin and his bench coach, coach Mark Kotze standing in the Hayes dugout. There's a strike. So far, so good for Drew Hutchison. A two out single to Reddick. He's ahead of Stephen Vogt. Josh Reddick looked a little antsy over there at first base with two strikes on vote. Like he might want to try and get into scoring position. Hutchison picked up on that. Good cut on the 0 2 pitch from Vogt. Vote's got an idea at the plate. Tough to strike him out. He's got great plate coverage and shortens his swing when he gets to two strikes. He has hit well here at Rogers Center.
There goes Reddit. Pitches on side throw from Tolly is late. Nobody's at third. So everybody kind of converging toward third as Reddick picks up his first stolen base of you, the season. You could tell he was a little antsy over there at first base, like he wanted to to try and make something happen for the A's here in the first inning. Two out singles, and now he takes uh, an aggressive lead. It's a good pitch for him to run on. It's a backdoor off-speed pitch, and really no chance for Josh Tolley to throw him out. The A's have scored first inning runs in both of the first two games of this series. Trying to do the same here with two outs. Ground ball. Tulowitzki on the first base side of second. That'll do it. Drew Hutchison leaves a runner in scoring position. Blue Jays will send the top of the order against. They split the first two games of this series, and John Gibbons was on the field during the presentation for the Silver Slugger Award to Josh Donaldson. Let's take a look at the Blue Jays. They are trying to get to 500 today. They're 9 and 10. Josh Donaldson, he leads the major leagues with 36 home runs off left handed pitching since 2013, and that's what he'll face today for the A's Eric Serkin. Troy Tulowitzki had his 12th career two homer game yesterday, his first two homer games since. Last May 29th, when he was a member of the Colorado Rockies. Blue Jays wore out left handed pitching last year, and they'll get a shot here with Eric Surkamp. He did not make the club out of spring training, but his contract was selected from Triple A Nashville. That was on April the 8th, and this is his fourth start of the season. There are his numbers in his previous three starts. Pretty good ERA at 368 versus the Blue Jays. He's made six career appearances for them, all in relief. First pitch, strike two. The red hot Ezekiel Carrera. And his first career four hit game yesterday afternoon. Carrera playing for the third straight game is Michael Saunders. According to the manager, he's okay, ready to go now, but he had been plagued by a sore hamstring. And he might have heard it from us if he wasn't in the lineup today after the game that he had yesterday, Carrera. Even said, I'm going to ride a hot hand. The guy gets four hits, makes two good plays in the field, and steals a base. He's got to play. Breaking ball down and away. Sir Camp is 28 years old. Originally drafted in the sixth round by the San Francisco Giants. He spent parts of six seasons in the Giants organization. Ezekiel Carrera with the leadoff single. The A's have committed errors in seven of their last eight games, and it cost them again yesterday. Take a look at the defense. Chris Davis, Billy Burns, and Josh Reddick from left to right in the outfield. Chris Coughlin continues to fill in for the injured Danny Valencia, who was playing third base. Now he's on the DL. Simeon and Tyler Labendorf makes his first start of the season. Alonzo at first and Stephen Vogt behind the plate. 
And with that injury to Valencia, Tyler Ladendorf got the call here in this series versus the Blue Jays. Josh high and deep to left, but it's going to stay in the yard. Chris Davis makes the catch. Donaldson trying to ambush that first pitch. We've seen him do that in the past, haven't we? First pitch home runs by Josh Donaldson. He gets ready, and he's looking for something out over the plate. He's got a runner over there at first base, and he's just hoping he makes some mistakes and tries to get ahead early, and he just missed that one. Now the Blue Jays had a season-high nine runs on 13 hits yesterday, so I expect them to have another, another good day at the plate today. Jose Bautista. Takes one up and away. Bautista 0 for 3 on Friday. He was 0 for 3 in yesterday's game, but he had a couple of RBIs. A couple of productive at bats. Well, here's what Sir Camp is going to try and do to some of these right handed batters. He's going to get you looking out over the middle of the plate. He's going to try, especially early in the count. Go away, backdoor that cutter, and use that fastball, and then once those righties are looking over the plate, he's going to try and sneak a fastball by you. On the inner half, he can also cut the fastball in there. So I think if you're the Blue Jays and you get ahead like this, or it gets deeper into the count, pick out one pitch on the inner half and see if you can do some damage. Kind of interesting that he would try to beat the Blue Jay hitters with a fastball inside. There goes the runner, the throw from Bolt in time. Carrera. Ball for all four to Bautista. Carrera with a head first slide. It was ball four to Bautista. He takes yet another walk. Well, over his last six starts, these are his major league starts, Eric Surkamp. His ERA is over nine and his opponent's batting average is 360. Like I said, the Blue Jays have faced him before, but they were all in relief in 2014 when he was pitching with the White Sox. Struggled just a little bit. A high whip and a lot of innings, or excuse me, pitches per innings for Eric Serkin. Well, he's in a jam here in the first. Runners at first and second, one out for Edwin Encarnacion. How much do you think the game yesterday will carry over into this game the way the hitters had those good at bats. Hitting's contagious isn't it and, and, and hitting is about having a feel at the plate the Blue Jays had a great game yesterday going back through the middle I asked Brooke Jacoby today I said was that part of the game plan yesterday he says that's the kind of team we are we are a gap to gap type of hitting team and finally the guys stayed within themselves and concentrated hitting it back through the middle. But that type of game yesterday, having that kind of feeling and the good, good thought process, should carry over to today. Edwin's in his eighth season with the Blue Jays. Guerrero started it off with the leadoff single. He's at second. Bautista walked. One-one from Surkin. Off the plate. Down and away with the breaking ball. He'll sink it. He'll try and backdoor cut it. He's got the slow breaking ball also. But he's looking for those righties to lean out over the plate. So don't forget about that fastball inside. Two balls and a strike. One out. Jay scored two runs in the bottom of the first yesterday to erase an early one nothing deficit. High and deep to left. Burns on the run. He's got room right in front of the scoreboard. Carrera tags at second. He advances to third. And Conishon just missed it, and Troy Tulowitzki will step to the plate. Yesterday, a big day for Tulo. He didn't miss. A couple of times off of Chris Bassa, a little breaking ball. Stays on that one and drives it into the seat for a home run, and then 
The next time he's up, he's going to take the ball to right field. Another multi home run game for Troy Tulowitzki. That is good to see when he's driving the ball like that from gap to gap. Tulowitzki had a three hit game. Tulowitzki now with four home runs and 10 RBIs on the season, still hitting under 200. But you can see this coming in Baltimore. That's yeah, starting to come around. He was hitting the ball hard to left field and then back through the middle, taking a share of walks. I believe that was his 12th multi home run game as a shortstop. The active leader. A rod 33 times. He's done that. Breaking ball in there. It is one and two to Tulowitzki. Blue Jays trying to take advantage of a leadoff single and a walk. See if they can cash in and break through against Eric Sirkin. Down and in. Sir Camp has to be pretty fine with his command. Work both sides of the plate, put those inside strikes on the hitter's mind, and then try to buy some of the outside corner as well. Doesn't overpower you. You you wouldn't sit there and say, wow, he's got an overpowering fastball or an overpowering breaking ball. So that's why he's got to pitch. He's got to be able to change speeds and hit his spots to be effective. Off the plate. Full count. Bautista at first will be off on the pitch. Carrera will hold his ground at third. Full count, two outs. Troy Tulowitzki. He's seen a lot of pitches in this event. If Tulo reaches, Justin Smoke will come to the plate. There goes Bautista. Ball is pulled foul outside of third. And extended at bat for Tulowitzki. He's seen just about everything Surkamp has to offer. He strikes out. Eric Surkamp strikes out Chulowitzki. The Blue Jays leave a pair. No score after one.
Rogers Center today was already a big day for Josh Donaldson even before he stepped out onto the field. Besides it being Josh Donaldson bobblehead day as Buck mentioned earlier Donaldson received the first Silver Slugger Award of his career uh, awarded to the most outstanding offensive player at each position in the AL and the NL. He was also presented with a couple of players choice awards voted on by his peers but the highlight his mother Lisa French making the trip to Toronto from Alabama to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. She told me earlier that the evening of the season opener in Tampa she actually dreamt that she threw out the first pitch to her son. She was so nervous Buck that she told me she didn't even want to see him until he came out for warm ups. I thought she did great. She sure did. I had a chance to see her down near the Blue Jays clubhouse before she got that opportunity. She was all excited to share that moment with her son. Drew Hutchison misses with the first pitch to you. Chris Davis. Davis in left field. Yesterday Davis was the DH He's starting to heat up just a little bit and provide a little offense from the right hand side for this team. He was talking the other day after that series in New York saying I can't let too many pitches go by I've got to go out there and swing you don't get any hits take it. Can't get any production without swinging the bat. Slider hit high and deep to center Pilar's on the run this ball is into the seats for a home run. Chris Davis his second home run of the season he hit 27 a year ago for Milwaukee. And that's why they brought him over right here just to provide some right handed punch. Took a fastball down and away. And then a slider sped up his bat and he hit that ball hard to right field. Slider. Down and away. Because I can't produce if I'm not swinging the bat. Well, he showed that he can swing it there. Well, that's what that fan thought of that home run. The wrong team hit it. <laughs> I don't want that ball, right? Mitchison comes back and fires a strike to Chris Coughlin. Coughlin playing at third base. We mentioned Chris Davis had 27 home runs last year for Milwaukee. And just 392 at bats. Got some power. Coughlin homered on Friday night. A free run a home run in the second inning off Aaron Sanchez hit a home run to just to the left of center field showed some power didn't he the other way. Fastball upstairs. Two balls and two strikes nobody out Oakland on the board first a home run by Chris Davis. Ground ball, Darwin Barney to his right, throws back and makes a nice defensive throw. Darwin Barney filling in at second for Ryan Goins makes a terrific play, flashing that gold glove style at second base. He looks natural over there at second base. He came up as a shortstop in the minor leagues, and he was telling us before the game that Ryan Sandberg was his manager in the minor leagues and really helped him out at second base. Positioning and getting jumps on the ball. He got a great jump on that one to Rob Coughlin of a hit. This is Marcus Simeon. Yeah, it was an interesting story, Marnie related to us, how he moved to second base. He was a shortstop his whole life. Stalin Castro was the shortstop in double A, got summoned to the big leagues, and Barney went into the manager, Ryan Sandberg, and says, What do I have to do? I'm playing great defense and Leading the league in hits. Sandberg said, it's not working out a second. <laughs> and he did. He said he helped him a lot and helped him get to the big leagues, and he won a gold glove as a second baseman with the Cubs. Pretty good guy to learn from, Ryan Sandberg. Yeah, he won a few in his career, didn't he? One ball, two strikes to the shortstop Marcus Simeon. He strikes out, waves at that breaking ball. 
Two strikeouts for Hutchison. Super Slow Mo Cam. Brought to you by Rogers 4K TV. Get closer to the action with four times the resolution of HD alone. Yonder Alonzo, the first baseman. Alonzo did not play in the game yesterday. He started at first base on Friday. That one goes off Donaldson as it was a hot shot to the glove side. Alonzo hit it hard to that glove side. Donaldson looking at that glove and he hit it hard, but they haven't played perfectly. Right to his glove side. It, that's a do or die play, if you ask me. Field it on the side like that, and you have to get down and stay down and try and pick it. Scored a base hit for Alonzo. His second hit of the series. Number nine hitter is Tyler Ladendorf. Hmm. His first opportunity of the season. He was originally drafted by the Minnesota Twins and after a season and a half from the minors he was traded to Oakland. He's a good defensive player. There goes the runner. Coley's throw is to the first base side of the bag and late. Under Alonzo picks up his first stolen base of the season. Well it's pretty obvious that the Oakland A's want to use the stolen base this afternoon with Russell Martin out. They are now 11 for 13 in stolen bases this season. Alonzo not really known as a guy who can steal a base. Takes this one. And gets himself into scoring position. They're waiting for a review. I don't think there was any question about that. I think the, the question is he hit the bag and popped up. Did he lose contact with the bag. But well, they're going to have a look at it. Take a look at the slide. It's a hard slide. Watch him go in. The leg comes up the knee hits. Now watch when he jars that base how he comes up off the bag. Right there. He's clearly off the bag there. Boy, that's a great replay by our technical crew. If they use it, he should be out. It's now, a hard slide. And he comes right off the bag with that left knee. And Barney keeps the glove right on. Credit Darwin Barney by keeping that glove on the on the runner. The, the Blue Jays are coming off the field. They just saw the replay on the big screen here, and they're running off the field. There's a call from the crew chief, Jerry Mills. The Blue Jays get the replay. This replay review is powered by Samsung, and it pays off for the Blue Jays. Totally credited with a caught stealing. Barney with a heads up play.
broadcast auction presented by TD will take place during Sportsnet's national broadcast of the Blue Jays and the Tampa Bay Rays on May 18th. 12 unique Blue Jays experiences and packages up for bids. Visit bluejays.com slash broadcast auction to see a list of all prizes available. All funds will help Jays Care go beyond the ballpark for over 62,000 children and youth across Canada in 2016. It's a great event. Hazel and our great hostess is Ivanka Osmak who does a terrific job on that show and it's a good show. A lot of entertainment value and a lot of great prizes up for auction so make sure you check it out. Custom Smoke switch hitter batting right handed against the lefty. Smoke is one for six in the series. Smoke has an on base percentage of 457 coming into this ball game. He gets a good pitch right there. There's an inside strike. Back to back strikeouts for Sir Campus. Checking with Jamie Campbell. Corey Dickerson hit his first two run homer of the day. That's his fifth home run of the season. And Corey Dickerson's been a nice addition to that raised lineup. That's a great addition. He's got some legit power. You know, you talk about the Coors field. I don't think so with him. The he effect, swings hard. He swings hard and the ball goes a long way when he connects. Kevin Pilar. His average up to 253. The looper into right, long run for Reddick. He gets there, makes the catch. Two up, two down. Swing for the fences and save during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Josh. Donaldson bobblehead nay and that bobblehead has the MVP trophy cradle in its right arm. Darwin Barney had a big night Friday night. There's a live <laughs> bobblehead right there. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere you look you see Josh Donaldson at the ballpark today. Darwin Barney lines it into center that's going to drop in front of Billy Burns. A two out single for Barney. Darwin had two hits on Friday night including his first home run of the season. How about Darwin gets to start this afternoon against the left hander and promptly singles to center field his first at bat makes a great play so he's already contributed in the first couple of innings. Darwin's a good asset for this team giving Ryan Goins the day off today and boy it's good when your extra players come off the bench and give you the bonus of offense. Here's another one right here has got a chance to do some something offensively. Josh Tolley it is only home run of the season off Drew Smiley another left hander he's getting a chance to face a lefty here today. Pulled on the ground. Leidendorf has it throws the first the inning is over Blue Jays get a two out single and leave a base runner. We'll go to the third Oakland has an early one nothing lead.
now on Enter for your chance to cheer on the Blue Jays in Boston with WestJet. Go to BlueJays.com slash WestJet. Fly away to enter. And Buck, you'll never know who you'll run into at the flight deck. Look, it's a giant Josh Donaldson MVP bobblehead. That's a pretty good depiction of Josh. They did a nice job with his beard and his mustache. Okay. Got the trophy there and everything. That's and a huge bobblehead. How about the hair? Hair. Every well, you never know. The hair's different every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to mix it up. Taylor Leidendorf was at the plate when Yonder Alonso stole second. And then the replay review overturned the call on the field. So he'll start things off here in the third. Mm. One and two. Lendorf is playing in his first game this season. He got into 15 or nine games last year. Hit 235 in limited action. Four for 17. Here he strikes out. That's three strikeouts for Hutchison. Known a little bit more for his glove. He was the A's defensive infielder of the organization a couple of years ago. So Drew Hutchison's going to expand on him just a little bit. Use that slider. He's got a tough break to it. Tight. Tight spinning breaking ball. Third strikeout already. Back to the top of the order. The corners on the Blue Jays infield in guarding against the bunt, Billy Burns. He takes one inside. Burns popped out to Josh Donaldson his first time up. Burns played in 125 games for Oakland last year at 26 stolen bases. Pretty good leadoff man one of the few around baseball where you characterize him as a prototypical leadoff guy switch hitter gets on base can run just a little bit. The A's might want to see him take a few more pitches he's an aggressive guy isn't he. He likes to swing it. Mark Canna is on deck. He takes that one. It's not three and one. Russell Martin was scratched. He's just dealing with neck spasms he left Friday night's game because of that and he took a beating behind the plate yesterday a lot of balls in the dirt another pop up this one into shallow right Bautista will get there two away here in the top of the third came to the ballpark pretty sore this morning when he when he got here Russell did and he was in the lineup originally and then right around mm, 11 30 or so quarter till 12 you John Gibbons was informed that he couldn't go so Josh Tolley who had an inkling and that's what you have to do as a backup catcher you have to have an idea of when you might be playing. Well first of all he came into the game Friday night because Russell had to leave with neck spasms and then yesterday he sat on a bench and watched Russell, Russell block all those balls took a beating said you know what I might be in there today. <laughs> Mark Canna struck out on a high fastball in the first. One for four with a homer yesterday. He's got three home runs so far this season. He showed some opposite field power yesterday. Didn't he? Putting that ball in the the bullpen of the A's. First inning home run against Jay Hem. Two balls and no strikes. Good pitch. Hutchison has given up two two out singles. Maybe a, a two out single to Josh Reddick and a two out single to Yonder Alonso. Shut him down right here. He comes from that crossfire action. He starts over on that third base side, steps across his body, and crossfires that ball to the outside corner, making it tough on righties. Paul Hart down at first, and the 
Kind of went too far on that slider. We mentioned that Hutchinson struck him out with a fastball his first time up. Pulled that one off the plate outside. Overthrew it just a little bit. Remember, I was talking in the first inning about how your hand gets on side of the ball, on the side of the ball just a little bit too much, and that's when you start losing your your release point. That's what happened right there with Drew. Got on the side of that ball and just pulled it off of the strike zone. Struck out twice against Hutchison, who has four strikeouts through three innings. Top of the order will lead things off. Ezekiel Carrera has six hits so far in this series. Every Sunday at Rogers Center, the Blue Jays salute the Canadian Armed Forces, and today they salute Warrant Officer Eric Le Breton. Le Breton serves as an ammunition technician. He has deployed on overseas missions to Croatia, Bosnia, and Afghanistan during his career. While deployed, he was responsible for the demolition of unexploded ammunition. Warrant Officer Eric Le Breton, today's Sunday salute. Thank you very much, Hazel May. Great opportunity for the men and women of the Canadian forces to be recognized here every Sunday at the home ballpark. Ezekiel Carrera singled his first time up. He has six hits in the three games in this series. Uh, he has the defense spread about as wide as you can have them. Infield straight up outfield straight up a challenge. I guess that if he can get one in between those outfielders with a little something on it, he could be standing at third base. Carrera has a couple of doubles so far this season. Way outside. He's done a good job of working over a pitcher. Not really up there, just flail on the way. He has good at bats. I think that first at bat yesterday told a big story. It was one and two, if you remember, and held off on a couple of breaking balls to run the count to three and two, and then got that hit. And he's done it again here. Full count. And as a pitcher, you're not going to mess around with him, not with that guy sitting on deck, Josh Donaldson. You're going to challenge him, and Carrera knows that. He's going to get a fastball. Center Reddick is on the run. Goodbye, home run. Number one. Mm -hmm. 
But you know you're going to get a fastball. It's what you do with it afterwards. And Zeke, who is hot, Carrera, with the big game yesterday, already two hits today, gets his fastball. Well, you were all over that 3 2 count with Donaldson on deck. And he didn't miss it. That's his sixth career home run, and it was a home run to deep center field. Look at how happy his teammates are for him. Getting a chance to play and showing what he can do. That's how you hit a 3 2 fastball, right? He got seven hits in the series. <laughs> Donaldson, 0 1 pitch outside. Now it's even. And the outfield might have to back up now just a little bit. We showed you that they were shallow. He gets his fastball. Got all of it. Every bit of it. He did a post game interview. With our translator and really was. Grateful for the opportunity given him by the manager and really appreciative of the standing ovation. Donaldson rips it down the left field line. Up against the wall. He's headed for second and he'll get there standing up. Sixth double of the season for Josh Donaldson. Fans are just waiting for somebody to do something that they could cheer about. And on Josh Donaldson bobblehead day, MVP day, he gives them something to cheer about. That was a breaking ball down and in. And just watch the barrel of the back go straight to the baseball. Goes right to it. Hammers that ball down the left field line. Nobody out. It doesn't get any easier for Sirkin. Blue Jays missed just a couple of balls. Just missed a couple of balls in that first inning. Well, for Eric Sirkin, now it's the second time through. Maybe they've got a little bit more information on them. So those balls, instead of just missing them, now they're going to start going out of the ballpark. Donaldson now has 14 extra base hits. That ties him with Manny Machado of the Orioles for the lead in the American League. Bautista pulls it to short. Donaldson holds his ground. Why not? Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Well, you hate to see that happen to anybody, any kind of injury where you lose a player. The game is hard enough without having to deal with injuries. The Indians are just on the verge of getting back their fine outfielder, Michael Brantley. He's about close. ready to wrap up a rehab assignment. Trevor Bauer will come in, I'm, I'm sure, the long man out of that bullpen and take over for Carrasco. Edwin Encarnacion. It went to the warning track in the center field his first time up. Pulls this one to third. Coughlin has it across the diamond in time. So Troy Tulowitzki, he was a strikeout victim his first time up. One of two strikeouts for Eric Serkia, the A starter. They got first base open here. Stephen Vogt's going to go out there and talk to his young starter about, about Tulowitzki if they want to pitch to him or not. We got Justin Smoke on deck. Talking with the pitching coach Kurt Young, probably about the same thing. Let's make sure we don't make a mistake here. We got a little leeway. Got some wiggle room now with first base open after retiring Bautista and Encarnacion. Troy Tulowitzki 
He struck out his first time up. Pitching him away and Tulowitzki's right on to what the approach is. He's got to make sure he gets a great pitch to hit before he offers him. Yeah, he, he's savvy enough and understands the game enough. If he feels like they're trying to pitch around him, don't help him out. Change up in the dirt. Pitching him just like they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Just the smoke. He's on deck, and they're just going to put him on now. Yeah, they put him on. They threw him three pitches, and now <laughs> they'll issue the free pass. And smoke knew what was up. He was caught looking at strike three his first time up, so he'll be anxious to do some damage here with two outs. And I think you should be anxious on the first pitch. We're going to try and want to get ahead of him. Oh one. So as a hitter be ready. For that first one and let it go. Through him a first pitch change up. Donaldson's at second. He doubled. After two were out, Tulowitzki was given the intentional pass. Smoke into center field. Burns is not going to get it. Donaldson read it perfectly. He'll come in to score, and Justin Smoke delivers after the intentional walk to Tulowitzki. You know, there's nothing like the team walking the guy in front of you. And the opposition saying, I think I can get you out. And you, you crossing them up by getting a base hit. Especially with two outs. Justin Smoke catches another pitch away from him. And with two outs, Donaldson's off on the crack of the bat. No chance for Burns to throw him out. Just keeps it down low so none of the other base runners will move up. And the Blue Jays take the lead. Kevin Pollard. Bends back from an inside pitch. Smoke second RBI has given the Blue Jays a 2 1 lead. Well, you're right. That rattles a hitter's cage when they see that batter in front of them. And when you do deliver, there's a lot of satisfaction in that. Strike two out RBI for Kevin Pillar, and it could have been a lot better if not for that great play by Josh Reddick in the outfield. Right off the end of the bat, that ball's got a lot of English on it. Look at the play by Reddick. It takes a crazy bounce, and he's able to corral it and get the ball back in and hold Pillar to a single. This ball gets by Reddick right here. It's a heck of a play. Tulowitzki scores, Smoke would have scored, and Pilar might have been on third base. But the Blue Jays have taken a couple of two out clutch hits. Smoke and Pilar both delivering. Quick visit to the mound for Sir Camp. Kurt Young went out, had a quick chat with him. Darwin Bonney will be the eighth Blue Jay to bat this inning. Carrera got it all started with a home run. Three runs in this inning on four hits and an intentional walk. Sometimes it just backfires on you, doesn't it? You sat in that manager's chair. 
It's tough. Well, you can't blame him for walking to Lewitsky at two homers and three hits in yesterday's game. And you fell behind him. You weren't going to let him hurt you. And yeah. then Justin Smoke, obviously, off to a bit of a slow start, but he picks up the big RBI. 1 1 to Barney. Face it to left field. Smoke comes in to score. Keep the line moving. Don Gibbons has been penciling guys in because of some injuries, and the guys on the bench have been coming through. Carrera the last couple of days. And now Darwin Barney with a multi hit game and another clutch two out hit. Barney with four RBIs now. Josh Tolley. He takes the first pitch strike. You know the big boys are going to hit. They've hit in the past, but when the extra guys come off the bench and deliver big hits, it really makes it tough for the opposition. That lineup looks a little bit longer, <laughs> and then you you give up some hits to these guys, and you turn around, and then the leadoff hitters on deck, just like that. Crowley bounces it towards second. Leidendorf has it. Blue Jays bat around in the third and scores four runs to take the lead. And here comes the ultimate cleanup crew, brought to you by Home Hardware's exclusive line of the ultimate hard hitting and tough on grind cleaning products. Thank you very much Jamie Campbell and the Blue Jays have their hitting shoes on again this afternoon. For Oakland. It'll be Reddick Boat and Davis three four and five in the A's lineup. Blue, Blue Jays shift as much as anybody in baseball. They had the seventh most shifts last year defensively and they're shifting again against Reddick. What's interesting about that is Josh's first time up they had three infielders on the right side of the infield and he singled right where Troy Tulowitzki is standing now. So they're making in game adjustments on yeah. their shifts and Reddick's two hits on Friday were both broken bat hits in that same direction. 
This is his first at bat. That's Troy Tulowitzki on the right side. And watch where the hit goes. Right, right where he is now standing. So you got to pay attention to the game and you got to understand what you're trying to do. High fly ball to center. Kevin Pillar coming in. And you're right, uh, his hits the other night were right, right there. Right where Troy moved to in that at bat. So good adjustment on the Blue Jays. Well, I think you have to give the defensive players some leeway, and Louis Rivera does that. And you can see him giving the infielders the sign. Rivera takes care of the infield. Tim Leeper takes care of the outfield. Leeper, he has used a tablet from time to time on the bench, and he will keep it. But you can see he's got the paper cards in his hand just in case the battery goes dead or something like that, or it goes dark. Stephen Vogt takes but one down and in. I agree 100%. I think you have to pay attention to who the pitcher is and how he's throwing that day. You can take the information, and that's where you can start your defense, where you want to line up your defense. But then I think you got to take your baseball knowledge on what your eyes are telling you and then adjust accordingly. Blue Jays are doing that this afternoon. Yeah, and every day is different. You know, your pitcher might have better stuff on a given day. He got a little better zip on his fastball, and you're going to have to play the opposite side of the field a little bit more. Favor that side of the diamond. 1 1 to Steven Vogt. Breaking ball on the plate for a ball. 2 1 1. It's a little looper down the right side, and that's going to drop in foul ground. Drew Hutchison has a knack for getting a lot of run support. Last year, he averaged 7.9 runs per game. Every time he went to the mound, the bats came alive, and it's a good thing. Today, Blue Jays have four runs on seven hits already. Do they have a stat for that about pitching on the right day? <laughs> <laughs> I know they have a stat for. For run score while you're in the game. That ball is drilled to Bautista. He makes a nice running catch. Good adjustment by Jose. This Blue Jays Rogers 4K broadcast is powered by the Samsung 4K SUHD TV. a good adjustment right there by Jose Bautista on that ball. It looked like it might have knuckleballed out to him, knuckled out to him, and he stayed right with it. Chris Davis homered in the second. He went to deep center field. And his first home run of the season Thursday night against the Yankees. Starting to Feel a little better at the plate. The Blue Jays got another good start from Jay Happ yesterday. He went 70 innings and really did a good job. Threw just 92 pitches and then Gavin Floyd took over from there, so the bullpen is well rested in good shape today. You know, you mentioned he threw 92 pitches yesterday. Tell you how important that was. He threw 22 of those in the first inning alone as he lost his footing. He gave up a home run and a single. Then the defense started bailing him out. So he finished up very strongly, seven innings. And then they pitched half, or excuse me, Floyd for the last two innings. So you're right, everybody is well rested if they need him today. 3 0 cut. 3 1 now. Two outs, top of the fourth inning. Now it's full. Drew's showing a pretty good fastball today. We got to check his spin rate. See if that ball gets on these hitters. Talk to some of the other hitters and see if they, they see it. 
like other pitchers. The appeal of the first base, no swing, says Paul Mark down at first. A two out walk, whereas Hutchison has had trouble closing out that third hitter in an inning. He retired to sign an order in the third. That was the first time today. He gets just a little bit ahead of himself, a little bit. He just tries to speed things up and talking to him in spring training he, he said that that he, he needs to slow things down just a little bit and then take it pitch by pitch don't be in a hurry to get back into that dugout just concentrate on making good pitches third baseman Chris Coughlin was retired on a terrific defensive play by Darwin Barney in the second Barney ranging far to his right behind the bag at second and threw back across his body to first Retired Cogman. Boy, the Cubs continue to roll, don't they? Eight nothing over the Reds. So far this afternoon. Chicago Cubs 13 and 5. Most wins in baseball. Tied with the Washington Nationals who are 13 and 4. They've won nine games on the road already this year. Nine. Two and oh. Cubs are nine and three on the verge of going ten and three with a win in Cincinnati today. They took it on the chin yesterday giving up 13 runs to the Reds. Josh Tolley with a quick word of advice to Drew Hutchison. He falls behind Chris Coglin. Coglin was 0 for 3 in the game yesterday. That's two and one. Blue Jays scored four runs on five hits in the bottom of the third, including a home run by Ezekiel Carrera to start off the inning. Three and one now. Even though they're down four to one, they might want to start that runner right here in case Coglin has an extra base hit. Not running here, and that's ball four. So Hutchison issues two two-out walks here in the fourth. Marcus Simeon, the shortstop, he's got some power. Simeon has four home runs so far this season. So you just can't hit take him lightly. No. Not four home runs. Batting average under 200, but he is dangerous. Drew Hutchison handled him his first time up with a good slider down and away to strike him out. Chris Davis in second, Coughlin at first, and there's the breaking ball for a strike. Boy, pitching ahead and pitching behind, totally different for Pitchers, you get ahead, it's a different at bat for sure. Sonny Gray talked about that in reference to his start on Friday night. He said early in the game, I was ahead to every batter, and it was a breeze. And then later on in the sixth inning, I fell behind, and all of a sudden, things got a little dicey. It was 1 and 0 and 2 and 0. And he could start using that breaking ball early in the game, and he did, striking out five of the first six batters in face. Pulled to Donaldson. He makes a nice grab of a tough hop. Good play. 
Hutchison with those shooter hands at third. Bails out Hutchison. Josh has a terrific arm, reaches back for a little extra. Once he gets it deep at third, right on the money. Green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone are guests of TD. While over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse are folks from Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Toronto. Welcome, everybody. Hope you enjoy today's ball game. Buck. Thank you very much. The Jays Care Community Clubhouse is always a great place to enjoy this ball game. Somebody's having a lot of fun at home plate lately. Is Ezekiel Corona? Two more hits today. He's got seven hits in the three games of this series. He can't wait to get up at the plate and swing the bat. <laughs> Good for him. Had his first four hit game of his career yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Breaking ball drops in there. It's one and two. I thought he might try and bunt one of these. We've seen him do that in the past try and bunt and bunt his way on, but the way he's swinging it, no need to. His home run last time up came on a 3 2 fastball from Sir Kim. His sixth major league home run. Carrera did a good job as an extra player for the Blue Jays last year. He played in a season high 91 games. Scored 27 runs. That's the most he's scored. He also had a career high eight doubles and three home runs. He's also had a couple of stolen bases this season. He was going on a 3 0 pitch to Bautista and had the base stolen. But it ended up being ball four. So he's trying to show the Blue Jays he can steal some bases too. A little pop up behind second. Lindorf is there. One down. Um, how about the MVPs from a year ago? Bryce Harper. An OPS 1.201. Eight home runs. And Donaldson, he's got an OPS over one with seven home runs. And they both have driven in. Their fair share of runs are off on pace to win another one. Has the calendar changed? It sure looks like <laughs> 2015 with those two guys. Hitting like it's 2015. That's pretty cool. Jay's forecast. Looks like rain the next <laughs> three days when the Sox are here. Bring on the rain. The bringer of rain is at the plate. You know what's interesting about that bat around inning in the third. The Blue Jays scored four runs on five hits. And they got RBIs from Carrera, Smoke, Pilar, and Barney. 
not the big guys, huh? You guys had a couple of ground outs. The big guys are going to give theirs. Always going to be shooting at 100 ribbies. Donaldson has 36 home runs against lefty pitching since 2013. That leads the majors against southpaws. He's got that unique batting stance where he. Got the high leg kick. He drops his hands, but he gets them back into that hitting zone very quickly. Generates some bat speed. Donaldson has an interesting approach to hitting. He says, I'm always swinging until my eyes tell me not to. So he is always anticipating that he is going to swing until he recognizes that it's bad pitch. I heard that years ago from Bobby Bonds when he was my hitting coach in Cleveland. He said, Your eyes are a lot faster to tell your brain than your, your hands are. So trust your eyes, trust what you see. And if you see that the pitch, and I think you have to be thinking about swinging first, and then when the eyes tell you it's off the plate, let it go. Well, he's having some good hacks at Sir Camp here. You know, Donaldson acknowledged Barry Bonds and called him one of the greatest hitters we've ever seen. And I know this from talking to Bonds manager Dusty Baker. Dusty said Barry could recognize a hittable pitch quicker than anybody's ever seen. Because every pitch is a hittable pitch until it's not. It's not until your eyes tell you it's not. Donaldson takes one inside. Another good at bat for JD. Civic now available with turbo the 2016 North American car of the year. Josh Donaldson has a walk on Josh Donaldson bobblehead day three walks now for the Blue Jays. Boy they have thrown these Jays hitters an awful lot of pitches inside. Yes. It's something different, and, and you got to imagine it's as a result of the great year they had last sure, year. Sure, we're going to bust them inside and can't throw anything out over the plate unless we show it to you. Swing and a drive deep to left. Get a ball gone. Too many pitches inside. To left field. I had a talk with Brooke Jacoby about that today, and he was telling me that this guy's going to try and come inside, and he's going to tell his hitters, don't forget about that ball on the inner half to be ready for it. And when they make a mistake out over the plate, be ready to swing the bat. That's exactly what Jose did right there. Tried to go inside, and that's his strength. That's Bautista's strength in here. Just catch it out in front. Fourth home run of the season for Jose Bautista. Let's take a look at that swing one more time. Sir Kent tries to deliver a cutter inside. Bautista is waiting for it. You know what happens? We were just talking about being in swing mode until your eyes tell you that it's not. You don't get caught in between. If you're up there and you're not really sure. That's when you start getting caught in between and fastballs beat you. You hit it to the right side if you're a right handed hitter or you get, you're, you're caught off guard on a change up. But if you're in constant swing mode aggressive until your eyes tell you it's not you have those type of swings right there like Bautista did. Curveball is low full count to Encarnacion. Tulowitzki waits on deck. Another walk. Second walk of the inning. 
fourth walk of the afternoon and left handed pitchers they have their work cut out for them when they go up against the Blue Jays. Well they have so many dominant right handed pitchers or hitters excuse me Donaldson Bautista Encarnacion Tulowitzki smoke is a switch hitter. they've just got guys who can wear you out from the right side so you have to be almost perfect versus the lefties last year and this year number one in all of baseball. Troy Tulowitzki hits one off the end of the bat. Simeon goes to second for one back to first double play. The Blue Jays score two more runs on a Bautista two run home run. They take a 6 1 lead. Now time for a Blue Jays central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg. Hosting 14 Honda Super Camps across Canada. Learn techniques from former Blue Jays such as Roberto Alomar, Devon White, Lloyd Mosby, Jesse Barfield, and Dwayne Ward. Register now at bluejays.com slash camps. Bug. Thank you very much, Hazel. That's a great opportunity to get some first-hand instruction from some of the best. Top of the fifth inning, Oakland down by five. Jays lead at 6-1. Eight, nine, and one for Oakland. Time to be a little bit aggressive now with a five run lead. Make the A's hit their way on. Three and oh. Tyler Leidendorf in the ninth spot. He'll be next. A four pitch walk. Three walks issued by Hutchison. Two last inning, both coming with two outs. Much upset with himself there. He knows what he needs to do here. Get through five innings and then another inning. You don't want to be walking that leadoff hitter. He knows that. Bender struck out his only time up. On a slider. Hutchison has four strikeouts, now three walks. Surprised a little bit. He was swinging at that first pitch after a four pitch walk. He was probably thinking he was going to get a strike, and he was right. Knowing full well that Hutchison had to throw a strike after. Walking the first batter on four pitches. Ground ball. This should be two. Tulowitzki to Barney back to first. It is a double play. It's time to convert your big outdoor tasks into short, effortless work. Make the great outdoors even greater with Honda Power Equipment.
Beautiful shot of the CN Tower high above Rogers Center. Troy Tulowinski and Darwin Barney teaming up for the 6 4 3 double play. Had a way to come back right there. Four pitch walk, and then you get that double play. Threw a good pitch, threw a good slider down and away, and got that ground ball. Let your infield work. It's one of the best in all of baseball. Fouled off the batter's leg. Ball on the strike to Billy Burns, who's popped out twice so far. Burns riding a seven game hit streak. During those seven games, he has four extra base hits. He is just two for ten in the series so far. Pops this one up. It's playable. Tolley and Donaldson. Tolley calls for it and makes the catch. Good inning for Hutchison after the leadoff box. He gets a double play and a pop out. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Jays with a comfortable lead. West Jet, the Oakland A's wrap up their three game series today. Then the Chicago White Sox have come to town. Blue Jays will have an off day on Thursday in St. Petersburg before they take on the Rays for another three game series. And then right back here, a four game set with the Dodgers. And how about some interleague? The LA Dodgers are in town. Four game set with the Rangers. Then the Dodgers come to town. And there's some some news about that White Sox series also. Justin Smoke goes out for the first pitch and flies out to center field. We are reading that Chris Sale might be pushed back in that series. To give him an extra day like the Blue Jays are giving an extra day to some of their starters. We mentioned that today there are four pitchers making their season debut as they've come up from the minors to give their regular rotation a little bit of a breather an extra day. Chris Sale has been pushed to Tuesday. Marcus Stroman will open up for the Blue Jays and so far we have not heard of who will start the opener for Chicago. White Sox got some bad news today with Alex Avila their catcher put on the DL with a hamstring injury well, on the DL but we'll see Dion or Navarro and Brett Laurie is part of the White Sox now. And, I, and I'm not looking ahead but did you see Friday's pitching matchup also when they go down to Tampa Bay for the first time they get Aaron Sanchez and Drew Smiley who's twirling a two hitter at the Yankees today. Yeah. They uh, are getting some good pitching uh, from everybody but Chris Archer. Mm -hmm. Chris Archer's off to a slow start. Kevin Pillar that's a fair ball. Down the left field line he's making the turn around first and headed for a second. Kevin Pillar picks up his fourth double of the season. Okay. An RBI single his last time up. So how do you defense him? Last time up he hit a ball down the right field line. This time up 
He's going to pick on a breaking ball. He's going to get the bat head out and hit it right over the bag down the left field line for extra bases. That's the kind of hitter that he has to be. He has to be able to use the whole field. Kevin Pillar's had six hits in the three games. Two hits in each of the three. Kurt Young, the pitching coach, is out to have a chat with Sir Kemp. The bullpen for Oakland starting to get up. That's the former Blue Jay, Mark Zepchinski. Just now starting to get loose. You can see the player sitting on that chair right there. That's Ryan Dahl. He was up throwing until Pilar got the hit. He has sat down. Zepchinski has gotten up, and you can see he's working quickly to get loose. Two left handers after Barney, Tolley, and Carrera. So Pilar. At second with a one out double. Darwin Barney is two for two so far. Pilar got the attention of Sir Camp. He was bouncing off second. Barney takes a strike. Blue Jays bullpen is up. Pat Venditti throwing with his right hand right now, and Jesse Chavez just starting to loosen up. You see Chavez not all the way back on the rubber just yet. Hutchison has pitched five innings, allowed one run on three hits. But it's a good day for the Blue Jays because they got seven innings from Hap yesterday and used just one relief pitcher, Gavin Floyd. Finish it out with two innings. I would assume that they would try to push push Drew Hutchison as far as possible today because all indications are he's going to be sent back down to AAA after this ball game. So while you have him, use him for as long as you can. Yeah, and obviously Blue Jays are in a tough stretch when they have the off day on Thursday. That will complete 16 straight games, and then they'll have another long stretch of games. So they want to make sure that. They utilize the innings as effectively as they can. Well, one the way they can do that is have a laugh, score a lot of runs, right? And then you can afford to push that starter just a little bit more, give them a little bit more leeway. Well, the starting pitching has been very good early on. Estrada, Hap, Dickey, and Stroman all bunched up to the end of the dugout. There goes Pilar. Barney strikes out. Throw to third. Got in time. Good slide by Pilar. The throw from the catcher was a bit inside. Now Stephen Vogt asking Gabe Morales, the home plate umpire, by making contact with Barney. And now he's looking back to the dugout and telling his manager, hey, I made contact with him. And there's the throw inside the bag. And Pilar. Spears that bag with his right leg. Utilizing that stand up slide, you pop up, you hit the bag, and then you pop straight up. Stay on the bag. He'll be credited with a stolen base. So Melvin had a short chat with the home plate umpire, and now he's made the call to the bullpen. So Eric Surkamp's day has come to an end. He leaves allowing six runs on nine hits. Former Blue Jay Mark Zepchinski into the ball game.
Serve him out of the game. He has given up six runs on nine hits. The runner at third base is his responsibility, and he looks to Mark Zepchinski to strand that base runner at third. And his responsibility is the next two left handed batters. Tolley and Carrera and he's handled lefties in his career this year though just 333 in his career he's done a good job against him. he hasn't given up an earned run in eight games this year. Tolley goes after the first pitch and hits a pop up into shallow left. Chris Davis comes in to end the innings of Chinsky and he's just one pitch to close out the Blue Jays in the bottom of the fifth. you've come to expect and more. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to At That Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Great opportunity to follow your favorite team when they're traveling around either league. Lots of action today. Washington playing an interleague game with Minnesota at home 1 1 bottom of the fourth the Mets and the Braves are tied 1 1 bottom of the fifth Tampa Bay's putting it on the Yankees today aren't they Tampa Bay hitting some home runs they got four home runs today that's one more than the Braves have hit all year How about that Tampa Bay is not exactly what you would call a big power hitting team Dickerson Souza Jr. Sousa Jr. has hit two. Pierce has hit one. Steven Sousa Jr. had a two home run game against the Blue Jays in the opening series of the season. Drew Smiley, he is dealing. Left hander allowed just three hits over five innings and struck out five so far. This is Mark Kenna, who is the DH. He's gone down swinging twice so far. Well, they got him set up for a slider now. He struck out his first two at bats on a high fastball. Stephen Vogt, the catcher, talking with a former catcher, his manager, Bob Melvin. Three times in a row, that high fastball has done the trick. Swing for the fences and save during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Statue of Ted Rogers outside the Rogers Center. Josh Reddick, one for two. 
goes after that first pitch. Drew Hutchison making his season debut, and by all counts, this will be a one and done for Hutchison. He's 29 and 21 for his career. Good changeup. Hutchison, 25 years old, made his first trip to the big leagues in 2012. Went five and three and 11 starts, and then had Tommy John surgery. Breaking ball slapped into the seats down the left side. I remember when that happened, that Tommy John surgery. He came up, and for about three or four starts, he was airing it out. I mean, he was hitting mid to upper 90s with his fastball. And I remember talking to him, and I'm like, what's up with that? He goes, I'm just throwing it as hard as I can to get these big league hitters out. And he paid the price, overthrew one, and tore the UCL in his elbow. And that fastball inside. Six one Blue Jays are trying to win the series against Oakland. Also try and get back to 500. They are nine and ten for the season. Breaking ball hit hard to right. Bautista looking up. This ball is gone. Home run number four for Josh Reddick. Second home run for Oakland this afternoon. That slider just stayed out over the plate and he hit it hard. You know he recognized that pitch Josh Reddick. He recognized that that pitch because it looked like Drew Hutchison was trying to guide it in there might have slowed things down just a little bit just to get it to the plate and get it to where he needed to and it stayed over the middle. Reddick has made a, a habit of that here in this ballpark. He's got great numbers here at Rogers Center and he hits another home run for Reddick. That's his 14th career, excuse me, his eighth career home run, his 14th career RBI here in this ballpark. Mm. Ground ball, Barney is out on the outfield grass, makes the throw to first to retire the pitcher, Stephen Vogt. John Gibbons has come out of the dugout. And he's got Jesse Chavez ready down in the pen. He's made the call. So Drew Hutchison will be out of the game. Five and two thirds. He's in line for the win. Good job by Hutchison. Crown Hutchison acknowledges the standing ovation. Well done.
Well, Jesse Chavez comes in, makes his seventh appearance against his former team. Jesse spent the last three seasons in Oakland. He's had a good fastball. Look what he has done to right-handed batters. 083 has been able to throw it. About 94, 95 with a little cutting action down on the outside part of the plate. And there it is right there. Back in the second inning, Chris Davis led off against Drew Hutchison. Looked like a breaking ball down and away, and Davis hits it to right field. Now it lands in the stands, and the fan catches it and says, I finally got a ball, but I don't care. It's not a Blue Jay home run ball, so I don't want it. <laughs> that was a terrific look from the fan, and Hutchison appreciative of that. Good outing for Drew. Yeah. He pitched into the sixth inning. He's only given up four hits. Chris Davis homered and walked against Hutchison. So I imagine John Gibbons said, you know what? He's seen the ball well against Hutchison. Give him a new look. Jesse Chavez reached back for a little extra, missed with 95. And, and this is a role, if you will, for Jesse Chavez. They said they could use him at the back end of the bullpen if they need to. They can use him as a bridge. As a setup man, a guy who can get out of an inning because he can strike people out. Maybe there's a little added incentive against his former team, also. Jesse was traded to Oakland on August 24, 2012. From the Blue Jays. Staying away from Chris Davis trying to neutralize that power. Jesse's an interesting story as well. He was a 42nd round pick when he was drafted by Texas in 2002. Chris Davis, Jesse Chavez comes in to end the six. Drew Hutchison in line for the win. The all news Honda Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. You know, we didn't get a chance to use his name yesterday when he got four hits, but we can use it this afternoon. Ezekiel Carrera with this blast to right center field, his first home run of the season. He gets to get into his home run trot, show that thing off, because that's our drive of the game. Carrera will lead things off here. He is 7 for 13 in the series. Carrera has scored four runs in the three games. It is first home run of the season back in the third. 
good sink from Zepchinski. He's got one of the best sinking fastballs from the left side out of the bullpen in baseball. Can't throw a ball straight. I bet you if, if you asked him to throw a ball straight, I bet you he couldn't do it. Brian Dahl is ready for the next batter. So Zepchinski will more than likely be out of here after the Carrera at bat. Josh Donaldson is on deck. Mark Zepchinski pitched it. Cal State Riverside. And strikes out Carrera. And here comes the skipper Bob Melvin. So Zebchinski gets Tolley and Carrera, the two lefties. And now they'll go to the bullpen with Donaldson coming to the plate. Ryan Doe will come into the game with one out. This is his second appearance in this series, his 10th overall. Blue Jays saw him Friday night. That was his first career appearance versus the Blue Jays. You can see he's not a real big guy, but he's got a great slider and he'll throw it a lot. He began the season on a seven game scoreless streak. But the Blue Jays got to him a couple of runs in that game, and he will face the middle of the Jays lineup. This is the same part of the lineup he faced when he entered the game. On the eighth inning on Friday, Donaldson, Bautista, and Encarnacion. He went two thirds of an inning. He got Donaldson to ground out to the shortstop, got Bautista to do the same. Ground ball to the shortstop. Simeon takes his time. Two down. Lots of sliders. He's going to stay in that strike zone with these. Very aggressive. Doesn't walk too many. Bet many batters he, even in his minor league career he was the A's organization pitcher of the year last year so doesn't walk anybody Bautista Jose hit a laser beam home run over the wall in left center his last time up his fourth homer of the season two run shot he has 16 RBIs they tried to sneak a fastball by him inside. Uh -uh. Won't work. <laughs> tried to do that last time. Didn't work. Another pitch inside. They push Bautista back. Generally, that's something that'll set up a breaking ball.
There's the breaking ball popped up down the right field line long run for Alonzo. He makes a nice over the shoulder catch. So Rindell comes out and retires Donaldson and Bautista will head to the seventh. Blue Jays lead at 6-2. Passion for Canada's team. There are only six days left to sign the Blue Jays fan board and have your cheer included in the Players Tunnel here at Rogers Center. Visit RogersCelebrates.com for details. Nice little addition to the runway up to the clubhouse. The Blue Jays walk past that wall every day. Jesse Chavez struck out Chris Davis. The only man he faced in the sixth in relief of Drew Hutchison. Hutchison got a nice standing ovation from the Blue Jays fans here at Rogers Center as he walked off the field and tipped his cap and acknowledged the reception. Yeah, they should. I thought Drew pitched really well into the sixth inning. It's a high fly ball deep to right. It is high and deep and gone. Chris Coughlin his second home run of the series and the A's are whittling away at the Blue Jays lead it's now six three solo home runs that, that's what you want if you're going to give them up give them up solo home runs Chris Davis has a solo home run Josh Reddick and now Chris Coughlin fastball it rises up right into his wheelhouse right there. And it's just a high fly ball down the right field line. There's another deep drive to center. Pilar is on the warning track and he makes a catch. Marcus Sibian flies out deep to center. Fastball over the middle. And for the third time this afternoon, the Oakland A's have hit a home run. And with that last deep drive to center field, John Gibbons is out of the club, or excuse me, out of the dugout, and he's made another pitching change. So Jesse Chavez gives up a home run and a long fly ball. Brett Cecil into the ball game to face Yonder Alonso, the first baseman.
presented by the all-new Honda Civic, now available with turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Sunday afternoon in Toronto, Brett Cecil making his first appearance of this series. Brett last pitched that final game in Baltimore and was charged with the loss to drop his record to 0 and 3. He gave an unearned run in his inning in two thirds. Lonzo had a base hit off the glove of Josh Donaldson in the second. He walked in the fifth. High deep drive to right. Bautista is on the run on the warning track. He's got room. Makes the catch. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Tommy Lestella has three hits. Jason Hayward has three hits. Rizzo has driven in four. 13 hits for the Cubs this afternoon. Billy Butler has grabbed him out. He's come off the bench. He will bat for Tyler Leidendorf. Butler played first base in the game yesterday, went one for four, had a single in that ballgame. Hitting an even 200 for the season. He has five hits in 25 at bats. Goes after the first pitch. Lewitsky has time, and Cecil is out of the seventh. Blue Jays will bat the bottom of the seventh. They have a 6 3 lead. Edwin Incarnacion will lead things off. Troy Tulowitzki has scored a run today. Justin Smoke has a base hit and an RBI. Cast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Any accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. We have reached the bottom of the seventh. Edwin Incarnacion goes after the first pitch. Edwin, 0 for 2 with a walk. Drive to left 
And Panachon is headed for second. Edwin will get there with a stand-up double. His fourth double of the season gets things going for the Jays here in the seventh. Blue Jays can do that, can't they? An extra base hits. Donaldson has a double this afternoon. Pilar's got a double down the left field line, and Encarnacion has to reach for this ball just a little bit. And doesn't create big backspin, so the ball dies off the wall for extra bases. A good start here in the seventh for the Jays. And see how Edwin has to reach for that slider. He just can't create enough backspin to get it up over the wall. Tenth hit of the afternoon for the Blue Jays. Three doubles and two home runs. Half the hits for extra bases. Tulowitzki goes around. Blue Jays have to figure out a way to get some of these runs back here, making it a little bit too close for comfort. They're going to have to do it against a relief core that's done really well so far for Oakland. They will give you something to hit. They don't walk you. Fastball just missed the inside corner. Ball on strike. Blue Jays trying to get a run back. They gave up one in the top half of this inning. Lewinsky showing bunt. Their baseman was back. That's Yonder Alonso as they have made some defensive changes. Alonso moved from first to third base. Coughlin moved from third to second, and Billy Butler, the pinch hitter, is now in the game at first base. His job right now after that leadoff double is to get that guy over to third base or get him in, one or the other. Fly ball. That might do it. And Connoisseur going back to tag at second. Reddick has a strong arm, and Edwin will hold ground. Not deep enough for him to advance. Boy, what a throw by Reddick. I'm impressed with him as an outfielder. He made a great play on the Pilar ball down the right field line to save him a run in extra bases. Watch him set himself right here. I thought Edwin would give it a shot, but accurately. Right on the baseline for Reddick. Reddick is a former Gold Glove winner in right field. He's always had a tremendous arm. Began his career with the Boston Red Sox. Well, Justin Smoke had a big hit in this ball game. Smoke had an RBI single in the third after the A's walked to Lewitsky intentionally. And Smoke. Drove in the second run that inning, and then he was followed by Pilar with an RBI single and Barney with an RBI single. A four run inning in the third. Oakland's bullpen has been good early in the season. They gave up two inherited runs in game one. First time they have allowed an inherited runner to score this season. There's a high fly ball to right. Reddick's got room. And Connachone tagging up again. He's going to move over to third on this ball. And Smoke just missed hitting his first home run of the season. Boy, he just got under it. Just got under it. Just missed it. Talking about that bullpen for the Oakland A's, they allow the fewest walks per nine inning. They have the best strikeout to walk ratio in the American League, and they have the most saves in the American League. So it's a very underrated bullpen with three closers down there. They're just trying to tack on a run to help the cause. Now well, Kevin Pillar, he's got the attention of Billy Butler. He's playing on the edge of the grass to guard against the bunt. Well, he, Billy was looking in at Ron Washington and asking him, "How far do you want me to come in?" And just in case Pillar pushes that bunt, and you can see Wash. He's telling him what to do. 
Butler made his first start at first base yesterday. Pilar's had another good game. He's had two hits in each of these three games. He singled, drove in a run in the third, double and stole the base in the fifth. Dahl's got a good slider. He's got a very good slider. It's tight and it's it's a late breaking slider. And Carnacion with the double to lead the inning off. Now at third base. And Pilar strikes out, chases that ball down and away. Dahl gets out of it. Blue Jays leave a runner at third. Will go to the eighth. Jays have a 6-3 lead over Oakland. will take place May 9th to 13th at Rogers Center and across Canada throughout the summer. These tryouts will help determine the players that will be selected to represent their province at Tournament 12. Register now at BlueJays.com slash T12 for the T12 tryout in your area. Fuck. Thank you very much, Hazel. This is Josh Donaldson Bobblehead Day, and you can see the doll has the MVP trophy cradled in its right arm. New pitcher into the ball game for the Blue Jays is the right-hander Drew Stoner. We saw Drew on Wednesday night in Baltimore. Gave up a hit in an inning, but retired the three batters. Seven games he's been scored on in three of those seven games, and he gets the leadoff batter for Oakland here in the eighth inning. Billy Burns has popped out three times. His seven-game. Hit streak is on the line. He's 0 for 3. Stoner effectively works both sides of the plate with fastballs, breaking balls, and changeups. He can throw changeups to lefties and righties. And he'll show you a couple of pitches early in the, the at bat. And then go to something that you haven't seen with two strikes. See, he did that against David Ortiz in Boston. Threw some cutters on the outside part of the plate, cutters in, and waited for that perfect moment to throw that comeback two seam fastball to strike him out in a big situation. That's going to be into the seats out of play. Storm's in an adjustment period his first time in the American League and takes him a while to get to know the hitters and obviously when he comes into a game it's a tight situation late in the ball game and he's, he's done his homework I asked him that in Baltimore I asked him about is there a, a period here he says no do my homework I know the hitters I, I lean on the catcher a lot 
Ground ball. Barney quickly to first in time to get the speedy burns. He's 0 for 4. Nice right. play by Barney. And that's what I'm talking about. He wasn't going to show him his good pitch until he got the two strikes. And he knows how important it is to get Burns, the first batter of the eighth inning. He threw him sinkers and change ups until he got the two strikes and then threw him that slider, jammed him up. And Darwin finished off that play. Blue Jays are in good shape with their extra infielder, Darwin Barney. He can play all over the diamond. He was a natural shortstop in high school and college and early in his professional career. First pitch breaking ball. Mark Canna has had the hat trick today. Three strikeouts all coming against Drew Stone or Drew Hutchison. Now facing Drew Storm. It's one of those days, right? <laughs> and you find yourself 0 2, it seems like, when you walk into that batter's box. All three of those strikeouts were high fastballs from Hutch. Now he's gotten two sliders from Storm. And he hasn't shown him his fastball yet. Fernando Rodriguez, right hander, loosening up for Oakland. Barney Tolley and Carrera, the scheduled batters for the Blue Jays in the bottom of the eighth inning. There's the fastball just off the outside edge. Fans wanted that strike, but it was off the plate. Josh Tolley, the catcher, set up off the plate. He hit his glove. But he missed it. You can see it from pitch trackers. Just a reminder in case you're just joining us, Russell Martin was scratched from this game before it started. Been dealing with neck spasms and totally got the knot behind the plate. From him up and in, it's a full count. Josh Reddick is on deck and he homered his last time up. His fourth home run of the season came on a slider from Drew Hutchison. Oakland has but five hits, three solo home runs in those five hits. Strikes out again. Four strikeout afternoon for Mark Canna. Josh Reddick will step up. Last time up in the sixth. Breaking ball over the middle of the plate. And Reddick hits his fourth home run of the season. Third home run of the afternoon for the Oakland A's. Luckily for the Jays, the three home runs have been all solo shots. Marcana with four strikeouts, and he's going to get sick of looking at that Rogers 4K TV sign out there. <laughs> Tell you how astute the fans are. They knew that too. <laughs> they, they knew after he struck out for the fourth time, they were all cheering. One hopper to smoke. That'll do it. Three up, three down. Drew Storm handles the A's with ease in the eighth. Now time for a Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio.
Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight. The Panthers and the Islanders with New York leading that series three games to two. It's game six for you at 7 Eastern on CBC 4 Pacific. Good playoffs on Rogers. Make sure you check it out. New pitcher for Oakland, Fernando Rodriguez, the 31-year-old right-hander, comes in trying to put up a zero here in the bottom of the eighth. He was a former starter, and since they moved him into the bullpens, his strikeouts have skyrocketed. He's got a good arm. He relies on that fastball. There are his numbers in seven games this year: ten strikeouts and three walks. Fastball. 61% of the time and it's a mid 90s heater. Darwin Marty with two more hits today he had two hits on Friday night. He had to start. Friday night hit his first home run. Of the season. He had an idea he was going to play today and thought he might be playing third base. Maybe a chance for Josh Donaldson to DH. But tough to have Donaldson DH on Josh Donaldson bobblehead day. People want to see him. He might have had a revolt <laughs> if he wasn't out at his normal third base position. Well, Donaldson has been on base twice. He scored a couple of runs. He had a double in the third. One for three afternoon for. Josh Donaldson on his day. He had a nice defensive play also. If you remember that how he backed up on a ball and. Made a strong throw across the diamond to end that inning. Fourth inning. Took away extra bases from Marcus Simeon. Hot shot down the line. Two two to Darwin Barney. Swinging a drive deep to center. Billy Burns is over in plenty of time and gets set. One away here in the eighth. Blue Jays have a 3 1 lead. Roberto Osuna, the closer, heating it up down in the bullpen. Drew Storen retired the side in order in the eighth. Storm needed just 13 pitches. Catcher Josh Tolling. First chance to see a righty this afternoon. Got two at bats against Sir Camp, the starter, and then one against Mark Zebchinski, a left handed reliever. One one count to the Blue Jays catcher. So Drew Hutchison headed back to Triple A Buffalo after this start and. He can go back with a feeling of satisfaction. He yeah. pitched a good game. Pitched a good game and knowing. That if. One, they do this again, and I'm sure they will. Whenever they get into these types of stretches where they're playing a lot of games, they like to back up their starters and give them that extra day. He'll be back. Two, if there's an injury to any one of the starters, he'll be the first guy called up. Totally a base hit to center. Just beyond the reach of Marcus Simeon, a line drive base hit. Drew Hutchison goes five and two thirds in his season debut. Hutchison threw 95 pitches. He allowed two runs on four hits. Both of those runs came in on home runs, but he did a good job of yeah. minimizing the damage in the three walks. Came within four batters in the fourth and fifth inning, so momentarily he lost that release point but got it back. And he walked that leadoff hitter on four pitches in the fifth inning and got a double play ball. Came right back, made a good pitch. Ezekiel 
Carrera singled homered and then popped out and struck out. He's two for four. He's had quite a weekend. Breaking ball in there. Two balls and a strike. One out. Carrera with his first four hit game yesterday. He's had six three hit games and looking for another hit here in the eighth. Spot comes up a lot, doesn't it? That number one hole. You get that extra at bat every game, it seems like. And the way he's swinging, he, he's running up there to try and hit. Michael Saunders did a good job when they put him in the leadoff spot. And now uh, Carrera has followed suit. Hey, that's all you can ask for, right? When you're an extra player to get some consistent playing time. Maybe you can get your timing down just a little bit, and it has worked for him. He's played some great defense, too, in this series. Two great diving catches yesterday. Michael Saunders led off five games, and he hit in all of those five games. Had eight hits and 21 at bats. He's ready to go now. The hamstring is to the point where he'll be ready to play. So if you're John Gibbons, what do you do? <laughs> Miguel Gonzalez is going to pitch tomorrow, the former Orioles starter. He'll pitch for Chicago in game one of the three game series. Stay with a hot hand. You know, that's the thing. You've got some options too. I mean, if you if you really want to think outside the box, what if you want to give one of your other outfielders a day off? And you can keep Carrera in the lineup and give one of those guys a day off. And that's that's another way to look at it. Put as many left-handed batters in the lineup as possible. Carrera walks. That'll bring up Josh Donaldson. It's been a big Sunday for Josh. A lot going on for Josh Donaldson. First of all, it was Josh Donaldson bobblehead giveaway day. Then Josh gets his Silver Slugger Award. It represents the best offensive third baseman in the American League. And then for icing on the cake, Lisa French, Josh's mother, got to throw out the first pitch. It's been a terrific day for the Donaldson family here. How special is that? Huh? And now do something special for your mom. His mom was a nervous wreck <laughs> before the game. He's swinging the bat. Here's the problem you run into if you're John Gibbons. Donaldson's having a great month. Bautista's homer today. You want to keep him in there and let him get it going. It's tough to give any irregulars any time off because you want him to stay in there. Pilar's had six hits in this series. So it's difficult to give any of your regulars a day off. You go up to them and you say, hey, we're going to give you a day off. Oh, uh -uh. Wait a minute. Uh -uh. I had six <laughs> hits in this series. I'm just starting to feel it. And Bautista can say, well, you know what? I had a two run home run and walked. I feel good. Things are starting to turn around. So it's a real dilemma for a manager. Let's put it this way. It's a good problem to have. Isn't Absolutely. It? I'd rather have More everybody good players pining to get into the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then saying, okay, now I gotta put a lineup together again. Who, who's gonna be good? I got enough good players that he's he's got some choices. Right three call. Donaldson called out on that inside fastball. You can't believe. 
believe it? And <laughs> neither can his mom saying no way. That ball looked like it might have been in. Jose Bautista in a two run home run in the fourth. Off the end of the bat. Simeon will go to second. That's the fourth out. Well, going to the ninth, the Blue Jays trying to win the series against Oakland. They have a 6 3 lead. They'll turn to their closer, Roberto Osuna, to close out the A's. Roberto Osuna is into the ball game looking for his sixth save in six opportunities. Second time in this series that the A's have seen Osuna there. His number is a little inflated when he has pitched in non save opportunities. He has given up his share of runs like that last time here on Friday. Gave up a couple of runs in an inning, two hits and two runs with a walk. But perfect in saves, five for five, and this is a save opportunity. Stephen Vogt, the catcher, will lead things off for Oakland, followed by Chris Davis and Chris Conklin. Jumps ahead with a fastball. Vogt, 0 for 3 so far this afternoon. Blue Jays using the shift against the left handed hitter. 0 and 2. You mentioned those soon as. Splits save situation against non save situations. His ERA is a run and a half higher in non save situations. I think that's why that ERA is a little inflated. High fly ball, Bautista calls for it. Pilar peels away. Run down. He's a different guy when it's a save opportunity on the line. He amps up just a little bit more. He has shown the ability, I think, this year to use that fastball on both sides of the plate. His command is outstanding. He, like so many pitchers, always searching for new wrinkles, challenging hitters to make adjustments to him. He's sinking the ball from time to time. He's added a slider. His changeup's coming along, too. Doesn't hurt to throw 96. <laughs> Chris Davis homered in his first at bat, leaning off the second. Ground ball, one hop right to Tulowitzki. Forty six thousand three hundred on hand here today at Rogers Center and they're on their feet.
two outs in the top of the ninth. And Homer and off Jesse Chavez leading off the seven. He was robbed of a hit in the second. He's also walked. Six runs on 11 hits. Drew Hutchinson, a strong outing, picking up a win in his first start of the season. And then they can turn it over to that bullpen, Chavez, Cecil, Storm, and then Osuna to finish it off. The Blue Jays with a couple of more home runs. Bautista with a home run. And the Blue Jays win the series against the A's. Roberto Osuna with another strikeout. Josh Donaldson. Scored a couple of runs on Josh Donaldson bobblehead day. Drew Hutchison up from Buffalo picks up the win. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow night. The White Sox are here. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zong. <laughs>